called bold humility. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it, bold humility is basically my own journey. Um, when I became a leader, a, a leader by title, by designation, mm-hmm. a, a school administrator, my, my journey even to get to become a school administrator was ridiculous to say the least. Mm-hmm. Um, I guess I'll take you back there. After my first year of teaching, I already thought I had all the answers to everything. Um, all you had to do was ask me and I could tell you how to fix every school and help every kid mm-hmm. anywhere um, find success. I, I was so confident and so arrogant in my ways that um, I went out and got my master's degree. And after my third year of teaching, ended up going on 16 job interviews mm-hmm. to try to become a school leader, become a school principal after three years of teaching. Didn't get a single call back and had no idea why. Decided then at that point that I was just going to go to law school just so I could prove to people that I was smart and then eventually get a job where I could start suing school districts that were making all the mistakes that obviously they were going to continue to make because they hadn't hired me. And just, I mean, it was just misstep after misstep after misstep. Had some amazing mentors that were brave enough to look me in the eye and call me out, call me out on my arrogance, call me out on the fact that I wasn't even a great teacher yet. There's no way I could be a great leader. Mm -hmm. Really humbled me. Um, but I, I, I did eventually step into administration um, after spending a, a little bit more than seven years in the classroom. Mm-hmm. But when I first became a leader, when I first became an administrator, I thought that I became an administrator because of how amazing I was in the classroom. Mm-hmm. And I thought my charge, my responsibility was to create little versions of me. And I call them itty bitty schmitties. Mm-hmm. And I went around and I tried to, to make teachers into tiny replicas of what I was. Yeah. I, I felt like uh, I have the answers. Obviously it worked in my classroom. Look, I was knighted and dubbed the leader of the school. So do things the way that I would do them. And I, I look back on that now and I think, oh my gosh, the, yeah. the, the embarrassment that I face of having had that response to leadership is yeah. it's totally embarrassing. Uh, but uh, about four and a half years ago or so, I, I started to have this awakening, this, these epiphanies that just started coming to me through mm-hmm. circumstances, through conversations, through reality checks. And I realized, wow, I missed the mark. Mm-hmm. And real leadership involves humility. I, I say often, uh, if you get people to weigh in, you don't have to try to get them to buy in. Mm-hmm. And that's, that's the message I try to preach now is how to empower others to find strengths in other people, how to get other people to weigh in so that you as a leader can put the right people around the table and that you don't have to always make all the decisions. Yeah, no, it's so um, inspiring to hear how you're, uh, you know, 